In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you some tips on using the Pan and Zoom tool to create the Pan and Zoom effect on a series of still images known as the Ken Burns effect. Producer Ken Burns used this in his documentaries in the United States to create a special style of interesting motion on still images when making a documentary. And so what I'd like to do is begin with all these images we have in our media room. But before we do that, I need to assume that they're going to be approximately certain length. And to make them uniform, I click on the gear at the top, and that will give me my pop-up menu. I'm going to choose Editing, the second option down, and here I have image files. I'm going to drag across the number. They're three seconds long. I think I'm going to change the average to six. I'll press the number six and click on the OK button. Now we can change the length of any of them individually, but I prefer to have them approximately the length I think I'll use to start with. So I'm going to highlight any one of my still images, do Control A, and then drag all of them down into my track number one. Then I'll click only on the first image. We're going to customize the pan and zoom to each individual image. And so with that selected, I click the Tools button above the timeline and choose Pan and Zoom. And in the Pan and Zoom, I have a host of options. One of the ones I'm going to choose is a simple one, also called Pan and Zoom. Click on that. Now if we play that, we'll move to the beginning of our clip. We'll see that we have a nice Pan and Zoom that moves in a predetermined direction. And now what I'd like to do in this case is modify it. So with that clip still highlighted, I'm going to click on Motion Designer button. And this will get into my Magic Motion Designer. If you're unfamiliar with keyframes, the Pan and Zoom tool is basically a shortcut to building this kind of motion using keyframes. Each keyframe at the bottom on the slider is represented by a diamond. We have a pink diamond on the left, and we have a yellow diamond on the right. So we're using only two keyframes in this particular example, which is a nice place to start. What I'd like to do is describe the screen for a moment. Now, this is a 16 by 9 design, which is really good because the original image is a DSLR, which is 3 by 2. And you can tell you see the black bars to the left and to the right of the screen. We don't have to resize it when we're doing this technique because we've set it to 16 by 9. And as long as we keep the bounding box inside the image, it will stay 16 by 9. Now, I don't want to start at this location. The blue is the area we start, and the arrow shows where we end. I can either click on either diamond to activate or highlight that. And then I click on the other diamond and it will activate it or highlight that. So the blue is the active location, the active keyframe. The yellow is the inactive keyframe. So we're going to go back to the yellow. I can click on the diamond here. Or I can actually click up here on either one and make either one inactive by using my mouse on my main screen. So I'm going to say I want the camera to start, let's say, up over here and I want it to start larger so I'll make it bigger. Now here's something you have to be careful of. Make sure that your bounding box stays inside the image or you'll have a black area on your screen. So let's start here and then for the end keyframe again I can click on this diamond or I can click on the yellow ball make that active. We'll move it to the center of that flower and now we're going to zoom in. And when we play it, we'll see the motion on the main screen, or you'll also see the finished product on the upper right screen. We'll play it from the beginning. And we see it zoom slowly down right to where I want my focus to be, which would be the center of the flower. And again, at either location, we can change the size of the image. We're back on the first one. I can make it smaller. 
I can move it farther away. But I haven't changed the last one, which is still zoomed in on my flower. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger. And I've adjusted my second keyframe in terms of size. So we'll stop and play again. And now it zooms in, covers the whole flower in a nice smooth motion. This is great if we had a botanical narration, for example. I'll click on OK. And now, if I look at it on my main screen, we'll move back over here. I can press the play button, and now we see what the first image would look like. Very nice, very smooth. If I don't like what I've done, I can, with that particular still image highlighted, I can click the reset button, and it will take off all the panning and zooming that we have done. Let's try another one. We're going to move to the second image. And on the second image, I'll click on Pan and Zoom and go back to Motion Designer to customize it again. And now I want to start with the image of the flower. You notice we have the Start button and we have the 16 by 9 by default. And I will make the image slightly smaller. We start looking at the flower. And then I can either click on the yellow key, uh, circle, which will make my end keyframe active, now, instead of making it that size, we're going to make it a little bigger. Again, we have to watch the area. And so now it will expand. I'm going to go more toward the butterfly, which means I have to make it slightly smaller. And now we're going to start looking at the flower. If I click on it, and you look at the preview window in the upper right, it looks like we have a flower, and then it slowly expands. Oh, now we have a butterfly. And so you're customizing the motion and the, the zooming and panning to fit the narration of the picture and create the kind of effect that you want. I'll click on OK. And now we'll just play the first two together. There's more we will show you in the subsequent lesson that you can do to make this even more interesting. There's my first one. And then here is my second one. And so I would encourage you to make each of these unique depending on the content of the picture that you're using. But that's some tips on starting with the pan and zoom tool to create the, what we call the Ken Burns effect.